last time I was having a little rant with a friend of mine about some things that I was struggling with and some things that I didn't like about life. And he was also complaining about a few things that um, he was struggling with himself. And at one point he told me that when he's starting to feel really bad, he just reminds himself to look at the bigger picture because it's this bigger picture that reminds him that actually his situation isn't that bad after all. And uh, I had some objections to this, which I thought I'd share on a video because I feel it's so important for mind-body healing and recovery. Especially since lately, I've had so many clients come to me with the main problem being loneliness. So, as you know, people come to me because they have chronic symptoms in the first place, but eventually we have a look at what's going on in life and a common issue seems to be that they might be going through a feeling of loneliness, okay? Or a feeling of deep dissatisfaction with something or other in their lives, okay? Because uh, if you know something about mind body disorders, you will know that these physical symptoms are just the branches of a tree and the root cause is usually something else that's been going on inside for a long time chronically. So uh, feeling chronically lonely can be one of them. Feeling chronically dissatisfied with your life can be another. And uh, to go back to what my friend was telling me, simply thinking your way out of this by telling yourself that you don't have it so bad after all, doesn't really do the trick, it doesn't work, and it actually comes as an invalidation of your deepest feelings and needs. And this is what I want to emphasize through this video, because it's so common for us to feel bad about something, feel distressed, and then just maybe watch the news and say like, oh, but I have it well, you know, I'm not in a war zone, I'm not starving, and whatever. And I'm not discounting the fact that these people who are in this um, deep trouble are not suffering and that they shouldn't be helped. But the problem with this kind of thinking is that we think that our problems, our issues don't count, and they do. And especially when your body starts to give you signs in the form of chronic pains or symptoms that keep coming and going or that just won't leave, then that's a sign that there's something serious going on. And we have to take it seriously. We have to take it as seriously as we take other world problems, right? And as I said, one of the most common issues that I encounter with clients and that I've also um, struggled with myself was loneliness, right? So that feeling of not having enough people around you to support you or not having enough people with whom you have something in common, okay? It could be the fact that you're looking for a romantic relationship and you don't um, have a partner yet. It could also be that you are in a relationship, but you still feel lonely because you don't feel understood. Um, so maybe the others in your life don't properly understand how you're feeling about certain issues. So it could be a variety of things, but I've noticed that this feeling of loneliness has intensified a lot since the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's probably because um, people cut a lot of cords with others as they started to isolate and uh, they cut out social events and I noticed that even up until today, not everyone resumed the same amount of social interaction that was present before. So a lot of people um, stayed working remotely from home, which creates more time alone and uh, a deeper feeling of detachment from colleagues or other people. Okay. It could be that, you know, people thought that meeting certain, sorry, certain friends was not such a priority. Um, and then they never got back to connecting with these friends. So it could be a variety of things, but <laughs> loneliness is a really significant issue and one that affects the psyche deeply because we were not meant to be lonely beings. 
we as the human species always depended on others we always had to live in a community okay in the past we were always part of a community of people where everyone had uh, different roles to fulfill okay and we really depended on one another and it is the same today it's just that this in this day and age it's a little bit less obvious because so many things can be done at the click of a finger online um, and we're so detached from the people who are maybe working hard to provide our food okay or to grow our food in a different country on the planet and we take so much for granted we know we'll be provided for in that way that we lose the sense of connection and we also start to think that we can function on our own we start to think that it's fine just being on our own um, we're still going to get something to eat we're still going to survive we have a roof over our head but the thing is this is not what the unconscious believes because we actually need social interaction it is a deep need and it cannot just be brushed away just because we can physically survive without that constant connection and actually probably we cannot physically survive either because we start to get sick we start to get symptoms in the body when we're spending a long time feeling lonely and detached okay that is a natural outcome because the individual feels threatened on a deeper level and uh, the same applies to the satisfaction let's say you are highly dissatisfied about the situation in your life okay that means if your body is showing you that that sense of dissatisfaction in the form of anxiety or depression or physical symptoms that actually means that there is something seriously wrong that something needs to change okay or you need to do something about it this is why we get symptoms so that eventually we will listen and we act upon it, okay? So it doesn't work just to say like, oh yeah, I don't like the situation, but other people have it way worse, so I should be grateful. I'm sorry, it does not work that way. I'm not saying that you cannot gain a sense of perspective. I'm not saying that you cannot be grateful for the things that um, you like in your life. But what I'm saying is that you cannot just discount something you don't like you cannot just decide that you're going to be okay with it, all right? <laughs> um, it, it takes a little bit more than that. It takes realignment, okay, with what you really want, getting clear on what you really want, and maybe moving in that direction, even though you can't change everything right now, okay? Because that in itself is already a form of self-empowerment. Um, so what I'm getting at mostly in this video is that there are so many issues, personal issues, that are brushed off, that are discounted, either by ourselves or the people around us, just because they don't seem serious enough. And sometimes we brush them off for so long that eventually we might get sick or we might get symptoms, and we have no idea why. Um, but it's actually that deeper part of us calling our attention and saying like, hey, there's something not okay, please listen, okay? And if you don't listen, the chances are that those symptoms will just intensify, of course, all right? So this is why I don't like to look at symptoms as the enemy, but always as the messenger, because it's almost always about something deep inside calling out for help, okay? Calling out for um, a break, from something that you find toxic or draining, okay, whatever it is. So what can you do if you're feeling lonely or dissatisfied? So there are kind of different issues, of course, with loneliness, it depends on whether you're just feeling um, alone, but you still have people around you, okay? Maybe you have to reassess what kind of values the people around you have um, in order to see whether you can ever be aligned in which case you might have to make some bold moves to seek out other people with similar interests, okay? Um, it might be that you are not accepting any invitations to connect, okay? Maybe since the COVID pandemic, you've decided, you know, to avoid too many connections, to, to stay home or, or whatever, and now you've got into that habit of refusing invitations. Um, so this is something that I highly recommend. 
Um, no matter how lonely you are, at some point you're going to get an invitation to go out or connect with someone. And it's very important to say yes, even if you don't feel like, okay? As much as possible, say yes to social connection. See what comes out of it and try to go toward it with an open mind, okay? Without prejudice, without thinking like, oh yeah, but we're not going to connect or um, yeah, she's always not going to understand me or whatever. Just try to be open to whatever conversation you have with another human being, right? Sometimes it takes opening up with a family member if we want to maintain the relationship, but we're feeling detached. Sometimes, you know, it takes vulnerability and honesty to tell the other person how you're feeling. And that's how we start to reestablish a connection, okay? When we're honest about how we're feeling and the other person starts to understand rather than just brushing it away or not fully explaining ourselves to others. And uh, if you live on your own or if you're single, you need to make more and more effort to connect with others around you. Okay, um, you might need to work from somewhere else where you have other people around you. Even if these people are not super meaningful for you, it's still helpful for the body, for the brain. It still lights up the brain to be around other people, to have a conversation. Okay, so that's how it starts. And then you think about building meaningful relationships later. But first start to live. First start to go out where other people are okay to pursue an activity or a hobby where you actually get to meet others i know it's difficult especially when you're feeling a little bit depressed or where you're feeling that you're not connecting with anyone but it has to start with being open to these opportunities first you never know what's going to come out of something right so uh, that's it from me for today i just wanted to get you thinking seriously about your personal problems. Um, I wanted you to know that, you know, your issues matter. Um, that even though you're not dying in a war zone right now, it doesn't mean that you can brush away your issues or you, that you have to force yourself to be grateful and happy with everything. Okay? That is not conducive to healing. It's the opposite. It's conducive to repression, where you deny your own feelings and emotions or you invalidate them, and they stay stuck there in the body, okay, until the body starts to scream at you. And this is what we want to avoid by realigning ourselves, establishing meaningful connections, and basically starting to live a life that we like more and starting to design that life. So that's all from me for today, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.